the Romans were one of the most successful imperial powers in history. They grew their state from a small town located near the Tiber River in central Italy into a vast empire containing more than 60 million inhabitants by the 2nd century AD. But how this advanced and in a lot of ways modern society started? It all came down to one man with a vision of a kingdom which would transform into an empire which would stretch itself to all corners of the known world. This is the story of Romulus, the first king and founder of Rome. If you like videos about history and discoveries, subscribe to our channel. One of the most important legends about the eternal city of Rome is the story of the two twins, Romulus and Remus, and the founding of the city of Rome. But how it started? First, we need to understand that we are talking about legends and mythology, and not actual history. And the most important aspect of the ancient people is that their tales, legends, stories, had to have a moral rather than being actually factual. But on the other hand, it's very likely that these legends are based on actual people and this is more or less what happened at that time. Our story starts way before Romulus was born. According to the legend, actually it started far away even from Italy. It starts in the middle of the Trojan War, fought in Anatolia, nowadays Turkey with a Trojan called Aeneas. Aeneas was a great hero and prince of Troy during the time of the Trojan War, one of the most important wars in the Greek mythology and history. The legend says that Aeneas escaped to Italy after the Greeks defeated the Trojans and invaded Troy. The descendants of Aeneas went to settle in the land of the Latins and created the city of Alba Longa. Since then, they were kings for generations and one of them was a king named Procas. Procas had two sons. The oldest one was called Numitor, and the younger, whose name was Amulius. When the king was close to death, he named Numitor as his successor and future king of Abalonga. But his dreadful brother Amulius, seduced by power, planned a coup against him. Hungry for the throne, he disrespected his father's wishes and took the place of his brother, he decided to spread the life of Numitor and send him into exile, but he killed his sons and then forced his young daughter, Rhea Silvia, to become a Vestal Virgin, a priestess of Vesta, the goddess of the hearth. And by doing so, he wanted to make sure that she never gonna have any kids which would threat his position as king by having someone who could claim the throne. The Vestal Virgin were chosen when they were just young girls. They swore a 30 years vow of chastity. Their main task was to maintain the sacred fire, and the punishment for breaking the vows was death by being buried alive. But in return for their service, they were given rights, privileges and power that no other women, even in the future Rome, could have. A few years had passed since Rhea Silvia's father was deposed. And one day, when she was fulfilling one of her everyday tasks, she left the Vestal Temple to bring water. As the legend says, she went out of her way and ended up into a sacred place dedicated to Mars and encountered the god of war itself. He got interest in the young girl and as the story tells, he raped her. As a result, she became pregnant, but she managed to hide this fact until she gave birth to two boys. Their names were Romulus and Remus. Their birth was discovered by the usurper Amulius, which weren't pleased with the news. He ordered to imprison the girl for breaking her vows and also ordered that her children should be put to death. One of the stories says that she was spared from the death penalty because her uncle, the king, was afraid to anger her children's father, the god of war. But other stories say that she was indeed buried alive, but saved by the river god Tiberinus, who married her. The servants of Amulius were ordered to kill the babies, to punish her and prevent the boys from overthrowing him. 
But instead of simply kill the infants, the soldiers couldn't do it and decided to place them in a basket and left them on the bank of the river from where they would be taken by the water and drowned. But their story wasn't over yet. The basket with the infants was thrown on the shores of the Tiber River, near which is known nowadays as the Palatine Hill. As the story says, they were rescued by a she-wolf and later found by a shepherd who took them to his wife and they raised the boys until they become young men. Other stories say is that the she-wolf is actually a reference to a prostitute who care for the infants. If this is true, then the story about the she-wolf suckling the babies is only an interpretation of the Latin words lupanar, which means brothel, and lupa, which is a word for both she-wolf and prostitute. The boys grew up and they become leaders of a group of shepherd warriors. One day, Romulus and Remus got involved in a dispute between Numitor and Amulius supporters, and Remus ended up captured by Amulius people. The word about Remus being held captive by Amulius reached Numitor. In the meantime, Romulus gathered a group of shepherds to free his brother. During his preparations, he encountered Numitor, the rightful king of Alba Longa. Upon hearing the story about the twin brothers, Numitor started to suspect that there is a possibility of that his allies are, in fact, his lost grandsons. And once he talked to the shepherd who raised the boys, and he told him the story about how he found the children and that they were first rescued by a she-wolf, and this happened close to the shores of the Tiber River, the same place where his grandsons were left to drown and the boys have the same age as his grandsons would have, then he realized that they were in fact sons of his daughter, Rhea Silvia. Numitor told the same story to Romulus, and both agreed that Romulus and his brother are in fact his lost grandsons. Then Romulus and his grandfather joined their forces and set to rescue Remus, and by doing so, they overwhelmed the defense forces of Abalonga and took control over the city. The usurper Amulius was killed in the process. Remus was rescued and Numitor was reinstated as the king of Abalonga. After staying with their grandfather in Abalonga for a little while, the two brothers decided to continue their journey and found their own city. The brothers went back to the place where they were cared by the she-wolf, a place with seven hills near the Tiber River. The year is 753 BC, the name of the place is Rome. The name of the city was given by Romulus after himself, but there is no consensus on the etymology of the city's name. One theory suggests that it came from the Greek Rome, meaning strength, vigor. While another modern theory of the etymology holds that the name of the city is of Etruscan origin, derived from the word Rumon, meaning river. According to the legends of Roman origins, the two brothers couldn't agree to where they want to build the new city. Romulus chose the Palatine Hill, and Remus insisted on the Aventine Hill. To resolve their dispute, they decide to seek the gods' approval through a religious practice called augury. Augury was a practice from the ancient Roman religion of interpreting omens from the observed behavior of birds. First was Remus who saw six favorable vulture birds, but then just after Romulus said he saw twelve favorable vulture birds and claimed that he won the god's approval. This discord divided the brothers even more and built extreme tension which resulted in a fight between the forces of Romulus and the forces of Remus. The conflict ended with the death of Remus. After Romulus became the king and he and his supporters started building what would be the city of Rome, the king decided to allow men of all classes to join his kingdom, including slaves and freedmen. Romulus also is credited with the creation of the Roman Senate, 
whereby he invited 100 men of the leading families to be the original Senate members. Their descendants came to be known as the Patricians, from the Latin patres, which translates to English as the fathers, with this forming the two major social classes of Rome. The other class came to be known as the plebs or plebeians. This one consisted of the servants, freedmen, fugitives who sought asylum at Rome, those captured in war, and others who were granted Roman citizenship over time. But in the new society Romulus created, there was a problem. There was way more men than women. So, in order to provide wives for his men, Romulus invited a neighboring tribe called the Sabines to celebrate a festival in Rome. And Romulus himself came with a plan to kidnap their women. In the Roman mythology, this incident is called the rape of the Sabine women, where the Roman men captured and didn't allow the women to leave the festival, infuriating the Sabine people. This, unsurprisingly, caused a war, which only came to an end with the help of the Sabine women, who at this point had married and had families with the Roman men. They convinced their kings that they shouldn't fight anymore. Then, to end the war, Romulus agreed on a shared kingship with the Sabine king Titus Tatius. The two kingdoms were joined, and the two kings ruled jointly until Tatius was murdered five years later. The Roman kingdom was grown with settlements around the Tiber River and became a crossroads of traffic and trade. After several wars with the neighboring tribes, Rome territory increased and then Rome became the leader of the Latins. Romulus was ruling for 37 years. The story says that he disappeared in a tornado during a sudden and violent storm while he was reviewing his troops on the Campus Martius. Other stories says that he was murdered by the senators, torn apart out of jealousy. But the Romans chose to believe in other version of his death. They believed that their first king was raised to heaven by Mars, god of war. This story helped the Romans to believe that the gods are on their side and gave them a reason to continue the expansion of Rome under Romulus' name. Romulus was buried beneath the steps of the Curia Julia or Senate House in the Roman Forum. This was just the beginning of the story of Rome, a story which extends itself for millennia and forms the cultural base of nearly half of the cultures around the world. There were attempts to find proof of real existence of the legendary king and his twin brother. For example, the finding of the Lupercal cave under the Palatine Hill in 2007 brought a discussion among the scientists who were arguing about if they really found the place where the infants were cared by the she-wolf and if they can find any evidence to prove it. How do you think our world would look like if Remus had ruled instead of Romulus? Do you think it would be much different? Leave your comments in the section below. If you enjoy videos about history and new discoveries, like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated on our upcoming videos. If you found this story interesting, feel free to share this video on Facebook, Reddit or other social media to help this channel grow. Tibi gratis ago pro vigilable.